Welcome to the PBC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. Joining us today is first team all ACC forward and the nation's leading rebounder, John Mooney. What's going on, John? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Always good to uh, have another domer in the mix here. Uh, hope you're doing all right during the quarantine here. Uh, hope you're back down in Florida enjoying the sunshine down there. This is a pretty odd time for you to both be graduating from school and now trying to navigate the pre-draft process and kickstart your pro career. Uh, so wanted to give you an opportunity to come on here and really talk through some of your tape and show teams how you see the game and how you think through the game and talk through some of your skills that will translate to the next level, maybe a couple minor areas to improve on. Does that sound good? Yeah, man. Sounds great. Thanks a lot. Wanted to bring up one interesting statistical query that I found when I was digging through your number. Do you know who the last ACC player to put up at least 15 and 12 was? Who's that? Tim Duncan. So pretty, uh, pretty lofty company and pretty high production there for you. Just thought I'd share that one with you before we jump into the film. Just undeniable the point and rebound production you've been putting up the past couple of years. Oh, man. No, thanks. Thanks for saying that. That's, that's definitely pretty good company, if you ask me. <laughs> Start with uh, some of your strengths on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, and we wanted to touch a little bit on your versatility in the post. So we're going to start with a clip here against Duke, where you come up and set this high pick and roll. As soon as you set this pick here and start turning toward the middle, what is your read in this situation and how are you reacting to how the defense is playing this pick and roll here? Yeah. So, so whenever I screen like that and, you know, we're taught to, to hard dive to the rim. Um, so in this case, you know, Duke, they switch a lot of ball screens. They have the ability to do that. Um, so, you know, when, when I see a guy switching on me, like, like Trey Jones here from Duke, um, you know, my job is just to go and try to get in the post um, because we feel that's a mismatch. Um, you can see here he, he, he switches and, and he tries to front. So now, yeah. you know, I see this or I, I kind, of, kind of feel this backside help um, yeah. from, the, from from Moore here. He's, he's kind of on that block. Um, yeah. But, you know, Prentice and Jawan do a really good job of, of trying to get the ball to the middle of the floor. When you get the ball to the middle of the floor here, it's hard to have that backside help. Um, right. Because, that, because if he's if he's in there too far, that's an easy skip to Rex. Or is that Rex or Dane? I can't really tell. But uh, those dude, those two dudes look alike. But so here, <laughs> I think that's Dane. Yeah. So, he, I agree. so it, you know, it's hard for that backside help to be kind of in the middle of the lane here, and then um, you know, it's an easy kind of high low pass here. Jawan throws a throws a great pass, and you know, I'm, I'm able to finish that. Yeah, I think you can kind of see as soon as it. Uh, like you were saying, as soon as it kicks up to the middle here, these guys react exactly how you said you anticipated that they would. And as soon as that happens, you throw your hand right up in the air immediately and call for the ball. You know, Trey Jones, great defender, but doesn't stand a chance with you sealing him off down there. So that's just a really nicely executed pick and roll and then seal there by you on the switch. Oh, yeah, that, that, was, that was the mindset. Next one here is against BC. This time, uh, you just drive baseline here and get ISOed in the post down here on the block. Uh, you want to maybe speak to, you know, when you get a defender down on the left block here, what's kind of your go-to move or how are you going about sort of feeling him out, how he's playing you in this situation? Yeah, so this is one of our one of our sets. I think the shot clock was maybe at like eight or nine yes. here. And, and we, have yeah. one of our, we have one of our sets to kind of get an ISO play. Um, you know, TJ sets a good screen. Usually I would, I would look to shoot that, but yeah. you know, M Mitchell does a good job of fighting over. And, and now, like you said, it's kind of just an ISO. I, I try to drive, he beats me to my spot. And, um, you know, something that I've, that I've worked on is, is when, you know, I drive, um, and someone cuts me off, I kind of just try to put on my back. You can kind of see here, I kind of just span and, and go into a post up. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I like, I like to get to the middle crab dribble here. Um, really comfortable with that right hand hook, but he, he kind of cuts me off and I uh, just, I just kind of fake it and, and go to the left. Uh, you know, I'm confident with both hands finishing. So uh, I was able to shut out here. 
Yeah, that's exactly why I wanted to highlight this one was that you were, you know, shot clocks winding down and you have the wherewithal to when going over the most comfortable look over your left shoulder with the right hand isn't there to quickly bring it back and have that nice touch with the left just really nicely done. Thank you. Here we got one against NC State. Yeah, but, you know, this one, I, I kind of just just slip it to to that post mm -hmm. area. Um, then, then Prentice, Prentice feeds me and. You know, I'm really comfortable on this block. Like I said before, you know, that that right hand hook is, is something that I'm you know, really comfortable with. He, he cuts it off and, yeah. you know, I just turn baseline and, uh, you know, shoot that J over him. Yeah. And I feel like I can recall a ton of these in your career. The little baseline post fades <laughs> like this seems like one of your kind of go to shots. And uh, you have that nice high release point, too. So you know, that in conjunction with your physicality to bump them off you there gets you a lot of clean looks like that. And that we, that we worked on in the off season as, as bigs, um, you know, our, our assistant coach, coach Ryan Humphrey is, is our bigs coach. And, and yeah. you know, he really emphasized the point of, of, you know, initiating contact when you're in, when you're in the post. So, um, you know, using your size to kind of bang them right there and then kind of freeze them a little bit. Uh, it's an easier, easier shot. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that I think that you definitely have the ability to take advantage of guys that are a little bit like leaner fours that might cover you sometimes. You've, you know, you've got the build, you've got the strength. And like you said, you've been working on it in the off season to be able to gain that leverage and create that space. So really nicely done and a good addition to your game. Yeah, so, so this one here is, is, is similar, you know, it's it's a ball screen and, and I roll. Um, they, they switch it and I roll into it. just roll right into the post and that guy's kind of a, a three, four. So, you know, when, yeah. when I see the, when I see the double come, um, you know, my, my first instinct is look to Jawan here. He, yeah. he's, he made a really good dive and, you know, TJ's guy has to react and kind of help there. So, um, yeah. leaves him wide open. And, you know, I kind of just, just skip it to him, but, um, you know, I, I don't put it right in the money, but he, he adjusts and, you know, shout out TJ for, for making that shot. He's a really good shooter. So, you know, anytime yeah. I, I can get it to him from the post, um, you know, we have a good chance of scoring there. Yeah. And I, I think I like how you called out, you know, everything that's happening off ball here and how Juwan's dive forced this guy to, you know, dive in and help on him. And it's really encouraging to see that, you know, after you built up your reputation last year as such a force in the ACC that, you know, drawing these hard doubles a lot more this year, you've been able to adjust and make those sort of reads and pick outs and skips and whatnot. So, you know, having that in your offensive arsenal, I think it's going to be huge for the professional level as well. All right. No, thank you. Tell me about yeah. your, uh, maybe you're expanding your game to the three point arc a bit. Yeah. So this really isn't necessarily a call or anything. It's kind of just a yeah. read and, and transition. This is early offense. You can see there's 20 seconds left on the clock when I shoot that. So, yeah. um, you know, Prentice does a really good job of, of, of noticing when there's kind of like this naked corner here. Um, right. If there's a guy in that corner, you know, I'm, I'm taught to, to dive more and take that take that defender with me. But since there's a naked corner, you know, I'm, I'm able to pop there. And, um, you know, that's certainly one of my, my biggest areas is to consistently shoot the ball from the three. Um, I feel like I've, I've done that in the past. I've done that my sophomore and junior year. I, I didn't shoot it. Um, as good as I wanted to from from beyond the arc this past year, but um, like you said, I mean that that's a that's a huge area for me to uh, expand my range and, and show that I consistently knock down the jump shot or the, or the three, I guess. Yeah, and the way the pro game is today, whether it's the NBA, G League, Europe, anywhere professionally, having bigs that can pick and pop or can kind of uh, spot up and hit these threes like this is huge and. Yeah, like you said, you sophomore and junior year, the percentages were really good. They dipped a little bit this season, but that might just be a matter of like a combination of just, you know, bad shooting luck on a short sample, uh, the line got being moved back a little bit, and, uh, you know, defense is probably keying in on that and their scouting reports and knowing that you're a capable and willing shooter and maybe, you know, respecting that a little bit more. But uh, I feel like, I'm confident that the baseline is there for you to be a good shooter and stretch big at the next level. Yeah, no, I'm confident too. Thank you. 
Yep. And then just going to touch on a couple minor potential improvement areas on the offensive end. And some of these are when you're posting up and get a little bit bumped off your spot and still end up putting up a little bit of a tough look. You want to maybe talk through this first clip here and like how yes. you react to this. So, yeah, I think this is one of the first plays of the game. Um, Coach Bray actually challenged me to to kind of be more aggressive early. Um, so what is this? This probably is literally our first possession. So, um, yeah. you know, he challenged me to to go get a shot in the post. This is kind of a force here. Um, yeah. You know, Mitch, Mitchell from BC is a really good defender. And um, like you said, he kind of pushes, pushes me off my spot on the catch. So that's that's an area where I can – you know, try to get that ball a little deeper. Um, yeah. But, yeah, and then maybe make just more like a, a decisive move or, you know, if I feel like he's, you know, kind of got me, maybe just kick that out and, and get our offense flowing. But, um, yeah, I mean, that that's more of a force than anything. Yeah, Coach Bray giving you the peer pressure at the beginning of the game. Yeah, maybe a little <laughs> bit. But uh, <laughs> this, one, this one here is kind of similar, you know, like, try to catch that a little deeper, but I'm, I'm really comfortable facing up um, from maybe 18, 18, 15 feet out. Um, I feel like I can use my quickness to, to get past guys. Popovich does a, a good job here of, of cutting me off, but you know, that's, that's a shot that I'm going to live with. And, you know, yeah. I think my teammates would say the same. I, I, I feel like I can make that shot, but maybe just be a little more on balance when I, when I shoot that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was going to bring up with that one. It's just, you know, Popovich plays it pretty well. He has good verticality against you there at the end, and you kind of end up having to hang in the air maybe a little longer and push up a little floater there as opposed to, like, when you have those more comfortable, smooth finishes in your, you know, mid-post game. Right, yeah, maybe just go to, like, that turnaround J earlier instead of trying to force that, you know, right. kind of running hook with that right hand. So, yeah, definitely. Cool, and then one more here. Yeah, it's just early offense, getting it in the post. Similar, right? Kind of a force here. You know, I, I should probably kick that out. You know, I see TJ Gibbs here. He's he's wide open, and Juwan sets a good screen on him. So I need I need to fire that to him for sure. TJ, man, my bad. I, I got you next time. But uh, no, definitely. I mean, this is just you know me me forcing it, and uh, you know, that's probably that's probably not the best shot that we can get. We can get that whenever. There's yeah, 24 seconds on the clock right now. We can get that whenever. So. Um, but yeah, maybe just make more of a decisive move if I'm going to go into it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it it seems like you know this is these aren't like huge weaknesses or anything. Just a couple of minor tweaks that I noticed when I was digging through the clips. And it seems like you're you know very self aware of like you know what you could have done on those specific plays right, and that right. run forward. You know how to like work that into your game as you continue to grow and develop. Definitely, definitely. Now we're going to move over to your defensive strengths, which I think most people know is especially on the defensive glass, uh, led the nation in rebounding this year. So we're going to highlight a few of these. So you want to just maybe we don't have to speak to every specific clip here, but I'll let all these roll. And you want to just maybe speak to your mentality and rebounding and how you like, you know, leverage uh your body against guys and box out and create space and go get these boards yeah i mean i i just have the mentality that, that every shot's going to be a miss so um you know I'm, I'm constantly trying to to work you know before the shots even shot to to get position on a guy and to get leverage like you said um you know most of these you know the the, the ball necessarily isn't above the rim like when it's coming off and when the ball's rebounded so um right so, I mean, I think I saw a stat where it's literally like more than 50% of rebounds are, are grabbed underneath the rim. And that's, that's all about strength and just grit and one in the ball. Um, so, I mean, not necessarily the, the most athletic guy in the world. I'm not going to, you know, out jump um, a lot of guys, but, you know, I, I still manage to go get the ball and just use my strength and my leverage to, to go and get it. Yeah. And I mean, I think that, that I, I think that bringing that, you know, technique and being able to clear guys out and, you know, be able to rebound in that fashion can often be more effective than just trying to high point the ball like you were like you were saying. And I think that, you know, that translates to the professional level, too, and that, 
you know, your team's going to need extra possessions on the offensive end. They're going to need you to end possessions on the defensive end. And I think you just do a great job of that. Right. Lastly, just uh, one minor potential improvement area on D, and this is uh, like closing out on shooters. Yeah, um, so, maybe yes. you can speak specifically to these uh, these plays here. Yeah, so we're in, we're in zone here, and and I get caught up. You know, I see the ball. Or I'm I'm playing this this back line forward position, and you know, I get caught up, kind of ball watching right there, and that's that's definitely. Uh, not good. I, I need to do a better job of, of not ball watching. And as a, as my or as this backline forward, my job is is to kind of contain this little short corner for a second. But I see Juwan's there, so I need I need to get out right. and shoot her quicker. Um, like you said, you know, close out high hands. Um, this kid Thornton's a really good shooter, so you know I, I need to be out there and and not be so worried about Mitchell here when Juwan's already on him. Right. And that I think that ends up being a consistent theme with some of these is that you have good intentions of playing help defense in the paint, but then get caught up with that a little bit too much and don't have enough time to recover to your guy that's a shooter in the corner there, right? Yeah, I mean, that one in particular is uh, a little a little different. You know, BC runs a lot of this roll and replace stuff. And, yeah, you know, you know, M Mitchell's a really good player, you know, however, he's um, – I think he's, you know, maybe like a 25% three-point shooter. So that that one yeah. right there, this is kind of knowing my personnel. And, right. um, you know, I, my job is to, is to help that role guy. Um, yeah. And, and knowing the personnel here, um, you know, maybe maybe a late closeout instead of selling out. But uh, Mitch, Mitchell hits this, and, you know, you, you got to tip your cap sometimes. You know, I probably could have done a better job yeah. of, of closing out with high hands and um, just deteriorating that shot a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that's a good point to bring up is like, you know, knowing the personnel, knowing the scouting report and, you know, knowing that that guy might not be the best shooter. So maybe you live with that, especially it seems like based on them showing the starting five down there. Yeah, this is early. Uh, one of the first possessions of the game. So maybe you live with a poor shooter putting up that three. Right, right. right. I mean, He's he's a really good player. Like, don't get me wrong. He yeah, almost had a triple double sure. against us. So you know you got to respect him. But um, yeah, this this one here is similar. You know, um, that's O'Neal. I think he only shot maybe three or four threes coming into that game all year. Yeah. Um, but uh, if we run this next clip, he's. Yeah. I mean, he's capable. You know, so I got to do a better job of of closing out with high hands, but. You know that that was that was kind of the scouting report to have a late challenge on that guy. Um, yeah, just because he's not what we call like an A list shooter, um, right? But yeah, maybe just more attention to detail there of of closing out high hands. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's personnel at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a really good point, and I think that you know as you become a pro, more of these uh, fours and fives that are going to be in those positions that Mitchell or O'Neal were in there are going to be guys that are going to stroke it pretty regularly. So not necessarily like even something that you were uh, in the wrong for in college, like you were following the scouting report, doing the right thing, but just something to keep in mind that as you go to the pro level, most of those guys are going to be able to stick 100%. it in those situations. Yeah. So you'll just have to be ready for that and anticipate that. Definitely. That's, that's a really good point. With all the uncertainty surrounding the uh, draft process this year, you know, normally you would have gone to Portsmouth, I think, last week, right, and competed in that against 63 other of the top seniors in the country, been able to kind of show out in front of some uh, NBA uh, front office staff and kind of show what you're made of against some other top seniors. You'd be scheduling workouts, going to team facilities, and in an intimate environment, again, competing against draft prospects there and showing what you can do. But unfortunately, that's not really on the table here um, with this pre-draft process. So I wanted to give you the table here to kind of express to teams, you know, who you are and, you know, what you bring to the table. So who is John Mooney? And if an organization were to bring you into their program, what could they expect from you both on and off the court? Yeah, you know, I think I think I'm a, a team first guy first and foremost, and you know I'm gonna do whatever it is I can to to help my team and my organization out. Um, you know, on the court, you know, I I feel like um, 
not in a selfish or cocky way, but I, I really do feel like I'm the best rebounder in this draft um, on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. You know, I, I really feel like I can just go and get it with, with anyone. Um, you know, I think I'm an underrated athlete in that regard. You know, a lot of people's perception of me may be, you know, oh, he's a slow white guy, but, you know, I really do feel like I can, I can move. That's certainly an area of growth where I can be better at, but um, I think I'm underrated in that regard. Uh, like you said before, you know, versatility is something that I've that I've always kind of prided myself on is, is having a versatile game where you can do a lot. Um, but, you know, I, I think coming in, you know, I, I really do feel like, you know, I have, I have the ability to maximize my role, whatever that is going to be. You know, I, I feel like I'm going to come in and just do his job uh, and do whatever the team and the organization needs um, on a day to day basis. I'm going to come in and, and work my tail off and and really just love doing it because I love this game. I'm really passionate about it. Um, and, you know, I, I really do feel like I can do um, whatever the team and organization needs uh, on that day to day basis. Um, you know, off the court, you know, I'm, I'm a like I said, you know, I'm, I'm a people first guy. I'm a team first guy. So, um, you know, no ego. I, I don't need to shoot 20 shots. I don't need to, to feel, um, you know, entitled in any way. I'm just going to kind of go in and do my job and form relationships with my teammates, form relationships with, with the staff and with the managers and, and, and the coaching staff. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm confident that, you know, I can be a, a piece of an NBA's team puzzle, um, you know, and if hopefully if I get the opportunity, I can, I can show that. I think that's an attitude that any team could get behind there, John. So, <laughs> uh, you know, best of luck to you as you continue navigating this process here, going to be following along and, you know, really excited to see how your career here plays out. So best of luck and thanks for joining. No, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, thanks for, for having me. Thanks for having me. Yep. Go Irish. Yes, sir, baby. Go Irish. <laughs>